So here we are in Shizuoka. This is a green tea plantation and from the end of April to the beginning of May, they're harvesting the first flush. And in this episode, we're gonna be taking you from here at the farm all the way to the processing factory where they make the green tea, then to the grading which determines the quality and price. A fascinating look at this industry and we'll also look at how matcha is made different than green tea and put into delicious foods in Japan in this ultimate green tea and matcha farm to factory to table guided series. From the sky, green tea plantations are beautiful. This one in Shizuoka on a hill. The tea grows at an angle, soaking in the morning mists and afternoon sunshine. This farm rolls down the hill to the river. A lot of leaves to harvest this week, and down there, it sounds like this. It's kind of loud. The farmers are trimming the leaves off the bushes for the first of three tea flushes throughout the year. It's challenging to do it at such an angle, but with modern mowers, the process moves quickly. Each bag can hold about 10 kilograms of leaves, and these machine mowers are 20 to 30 times faster than hand picking like 70 years ago. Each two-person team can harvest 1,500 kilograms per day, and this farm produces 22,000 kilograms of green tea per year. そこに流れてるアベカの風が非常にここの畑によく吹いて当たるもんですから、あの朝晩の温度で朝霧が当たって非常にまろやかなあの美味しいお茶ができます。At the end of rows, the bag is changed, and the team goes back to trim the other half. The bushy tea leaves are purposely this shape, always waist high and curved for easy harvesting. Tea bags are run via monorail to the truck. All the tea is processed the same day because the tea can change taste ever so slightly from day to day. And in the grading process, the date of the harvest is an important factor. After the bags are loaded onto the truck, they're driven to the processing factory at the bottom of the hill. Area farmers work with co-ops to produce the tea. Geographical area, another factor in taste. The freshly cut green tea leaves are quickly tossed into the bin to start the process. 40 tea farms currently belong to this factory, which will produce 160 to 180,000 kilograms of green tea a year. At this processing factory, there are 10 machines after harvest and four kneading processes to make Shizuoka's deep steamed Fukamushi Sencha before it's bagged, graded by experts and sold. At first glance, green tea leaves don't look very special, do they? Soon after being picked, they start to ferment. They still have the heat of the sun and a lot of moisture in them. They're first moved to a giant bin to keep them fresh, moving evenly through the process. Blowers here keep the temperature of the leaves down to preserve the freshness. Speed is important. What's picked on this day will be processed on the same day, otherwise the taste will be uneven and worsen. Next, we walk into the neighboring room where the steaming takes place. The tea leaves from the feeder are moved into a rotating barrel which has filters to remove any small debris. Next, are loaded into the tea steam machine. Steaming the tea leaves stops the fermentation process, preserving its freshness and taste. This factory is processing Fukamushi Sencha, which is a 122nd deep steam. The steam time plays a big role in the taste. Asamushi Sencha, or lightly steamed tea for 20 to 30 seconds, has a stronger aroma, but lighter to clear green colored tea and light grassy taste. Fukamushi is richer, darker, but with a weaker aroma. All this controlled by the steam time. Chumushi Sencha is right in the middle, steamed for about 60 seconds. 
The freshly steamed tea leaves are hot and need to be cooled immediately or lose their flavor, color, and aroma. The freshly steamed tea makes its way up to the next step. This step, called soju kneading, or kneading by blowing warm, dry air, decreases the water content greatly and softens them up. Following the soju kneading, tea leaves start drying on the outside, but have a lot of moisture on the inside. The tea leaves are cooled, you can see they still have moisture in them. That takes us to the next stage, Junen kneading. This breaks down the cell walls of the tea leaves and removes the moisture inside the stems and blades of the leaf to create uniform water content. Next is Chuju kneading, which further reduces the water content. These warm dryers also loosen them up for the final kneading stage. This is stage four. Seiju kneading, which uses a back and forth movement, giving the tea a needle-like shape. The moisture is further reduced here. You can see it's really changing shape. Both blades and stems have visibly become the green tea that we know in packages. After the four kneading stages, they're moved up to the drying. It's slowly moved through the hot 95 degrees Celsius air temperatures. They're dried to about 5% moisture here. After being dried, they're moved to the sorting machine, which is sorting out the stems and blades to blend them into the desired product. At this stage, we can take the green tea and make a perfect cup of Fukumushi Sencha. Straight from the factory line, look at that deep, rich green. After all this work is done, it's taken to the examination location to be graded. This is the Oyaizu Seiichi Tea Company. Area farmers bring their green tea here for grading. Processed blends are brought in the next morning. It can get really busy here in season. They measure out three grams of tea using one yen coins. One coin is a gram. Then a teaspoon of tea is tasted. They use near boiling hot water, 98 degrees centigrade. First the tea leaf aroma is measured. The other teas help the examiner by giving him a reference point to judge. Then a teaspoon of tea is tasted. What exactly is he judging? Let's ask. ちゃんと見るとき、やっぱりあの、とか the tea examiners rely on their long history and knowledge of sipping tea, being able to differentiate the best from average green tea, which, of course, influences price. But in the end, every tea drinker will have their own experience, likes and dislikes, with taste and aroma. In a previous episode, we learned about how making tea with boiling hot water increases the caffeine content, making it taste more bitter, and how using 70 degree warm to hot water makes your green tea a little sweeter. In terms of quality, though, I still don't have enough palate for it. I still drink too much coffee. It's true the size, shape, and color of the leaves are important, but within that, there is also the location, elevation, temperature, and that taste even changes day by day. 
Leaves harvested on a Monday from the same farm can have a distinctively different taste than leaves harvested on a Wednesday. They've soaked in two more days of sunshine, water, air, that will impact the sweetness and aroma. Feedback is given to the grower and the tea is stored in cold warehouses to preserve its freshness. A temperature of minus 25 degrees Celsius is maintained year-round, tea stored here for up to two years. This is how people can have delicious green tea even before the first harvest, almost a year later. Before refrigeration, old green tea didn't taste very good, so Japanese would roast it to make hoji cha, or add rice to it to make genmai cha, which improved the taste. Those are still much beloved varieties, but Fukamushi Sencha is now sold anytime instead of just seasonal. Next time we'll look at how growing and processing green tea leaves is different than producing matcha, the green powder that's used in Japanese tea ceremony and popular Japanese confections. It's unique and so are those delicious desserts we'll eat. If you liked it, hit that subscribe button and join me on another adventure around every part of this amazing country. Mata ne!